Hey guys! Good morning! Welcome to another wonderful edition of our Monday vlog with the Beautiful Kingdom Warriors. We're really, really excited to have our Family Ministries Director at our church, um, North Harbor Community Church, Lisa Wells, is Hello. with us today. <laughs> and we've been really excited to just um, come together today to just really talk a little bit more about our beautiful and dangerous sermon series. Um, Lisa did a great sermon series on um, is it what the women and sexuality. Yeah, basically. women and sexuality. Yeah. I was trying to remember the actual title, but I'm going to let her get into that in a little bit. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, Lisa is a wonderful, wonderful teacher with a beautiful heart um, for um, women, for kids, for men for everyone she's just got a heart for sharing the truth of Christ with um, any image bearer that crosses her path mm -hmm. so yeah yeah um, first time I met Lisa was a couple years ago at Brunswick Mops here in Maine mm -hmm. and she was teaching on talking to your children about God which she was really passionate about and I was really taking with her teaching gifting mm -hmm. she's really um, good at encapsulating things in a memorable, clear way, and we're big fans of Lisa we at our church. Fans. Well, it's mutual. We're going to be a little love fest this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, Lisa is the reason my family um, first visited North Harbor after I saw her at Mops, and mm -hmm. we've been there ever since for two years now in April. Mm -hmm. North Harbor Community Church, Tops in Maine, check it out, mm -hmm. and you can see or listen to her sermon at northharbor.net, mm -hmm. um, number five in the current season, uh, series. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk more about this with Lisa. Um, we've got some questions for her. First of all, we were curious to know what led the teaching team at North Harbor to take on an eight-week series on sexuality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I am one of a few teachers um, at North Harbor. Dan, my husband, is the lead pastor, and so he does most of the teaching. Um, Becky's husband, Graham, Ruth's husband, Logan, have also both mm -hmm. taught. Um, we hadn't done a series on sexuality in the eight years that we've been um, having public services. And I think there was just kind of a sense from Dan and really from all of us that it, it was time um, to, to engage that topic in a meaningful way. Um, and Ruth had actually read a book um, and passed it on to us, passed the title on to us by Brene Brown called Daring Greatly. And it was really um, an incredible read. Um, and really uh, transformative, actually, for Dan and myself um, about the power of shame and about um, the shame-busting power of vulnerability. Um, and we felt like, you know, Dan felt like those two things really fit well together, talking about sexuality, talking about vulnerability. Um, and once we sort of opened that door, just the floodgates have opened in terms of how much research supports that uh, vulnerability really is incredibly important for sexual connection. Um, and of course, the Christian perspective on that, on godly sexual connection. Mm. So That's awesome. Yeah. So the sermon that you ended up um, titling your particular sermon was um, Sex Equals Symbol, mm -hmm. Body Equals Image. Yeah. And if you remember, <laughs> I had attempted to kind of put it on paper and Ruth kind of fleshed it out a little bit. Um, and yeah, so we kind of wanted to chat a little bit, I think, about going into that a little bit more mm -hmm. because we only touched on it um, a little bit. And I'd love to hear kind of a little bit more of your thoughts about kind of how you came to that, um, maybe some things that you didn't have time to kind of veer into in the sermon. Sure. Okay, yeah. Um, so as I was doing um, my preparation for the sermon, I really did a lot of reading on embodiment and what it means to have a body. Um, and I didn't really know ahead of time that my research would take me in that direction. I just felt like we're talking about sex. I should be, I should be reading up on bodies, right? Sex is something that happens with our bodies. It's way more than that. It also happens with our souls and our minds. Um, but I think sometimes in Christian circles, we downplay our bodies, um, or when we do talk about them, it's in sort of an aesthetic way, like, you know, how we're supposed to whip them into shape and train them. Um, and we don't understand fully enough, I think, really, um, some aspects of bodily pleasure 
and how that actually glorifies God and images God. Mm -hmm. So um, I just kind of start on this path of uh, thinking through what it means to be an ensouled body and what it means to be an embodied soul, that these two things really do go together. And that even though faith is obviously largely an intellectual um, and emotional uh, process, placing our faith in Christ. It's also something that happens with our bodies, and this is uh, completely all over the New Testament mm -hmm. um, and the Hebrew Scriptures as well, that because we are in soul bodies and embodied souls, we cannot live a life of faith that does not impact our bodily lives. Um, and herein is the tie-in to the sexuality piece. Right. Um, as I started, you know, digging deeper into this idea of being an, um, an ensouled body, that we are our bodies. They are not peripheral to who we are. They are who we are. Um, and I, I uh, did a little bit of um, research on Amy Cuddy's research. Um, Amy Cuddy talks on, she has a talk on TED.com um, about body language and how our bodies are constantly communicating. I think a lot of us know that our body language communicates to others, but her research in particular was fascinating to me because she talked about how our bodies also communicate to ourselves. Mm. Um, I'll let you guys uh, look up the TED.com talk. I won't summarize the entire thing, but just fascinating stuff on how um, our bodies can actually impact um, the chemistry in our brains mm -hmm. and it was just so powerful to me to think about that that um, you know so many times we kind of pay homage to the power of our mind and that if we change how we're thinking um, that can really impact our bodies and that is true it's absolutely true you guys talked about that last week with um, the emotional porn talk that you did on your blog um, but it really goes both ways that mm -hmm. our bodies also can impact our minds and I think that's such a hopeful message um, when we feel stuck in a place where maybe we, we feel powerless to change how we're thinking. Um, there's hope in saying, okay, maybe you feel like, you know, you can't sort of round the corner or crest the hill with this particular thought pattern. But if you would just act in or live into the truth of this thing, mm -hmm. offer yourself to your spouse, initiate sex, initiate conversation about sex, um, you know, initiate conversation with people um, that are not your spouse, or if, if, you're, if you're single, obviously that would be your only option, right? To have conversation about this stuff, um, that when your body um, leads your mind in that way, it actually can change what is going on inside of you. And yeah. it's, it's an incredible, beautiful thing that God made our bodies and our souls and our minds to just work together. Um, so yeah, I was I was blown away by what I learned. Yeah, I think you know I think it's really important that we, and this is why this is just going to be a random little moment that I'm going to have. That I feel like it's very important to think through the way that our body talks to others and to ourselves. I love the concept mm -hmm. of it being in sexuality um, or in relationship. But because I'm constantly bombarded with um, the physical part of how we look, that's mm -hmm. another really important part that, you know, it's not vanity to care about you, you expressing the story of who you are with how you look. Mm -hmm. Right, because mm -hmm. that talks to mm -hmm. that talks to yourself, mm -hmm. and it talks to others. So um, that's really interesting in terms of like self care, you know, mm -hmm. and and in in fashion and in hair and in makeup. That you know, you can absolutely still be um, talking to the world with how you look, which is why that's important. It's important to. Mm -hmm. be aware of what you're wearing or why you're wearing what you're wearing um you know I, I don't know it no, just came to my brain waves oh, go ahead well I was just curious to know um if you could talk more about you had a list of c words mm. about sex <laughs> uh, on the positive end versus consumerism right. which I can remember consumerism really good yes <laughs> We're good at consumerism, mm -hmm. but I wonder if you could talk more about the positive aspects of celebrating sex. Yeah. Um, so I think sometimes, again, this is the church kind of um, 
inadvertently gets this wrong sometimes when uh, we kind of put out there what we're against with immorality in terms of sexual expression, and we don't really paint a picture of like, well, what is sex for? I think it's important when you're, um, you know, putting out there that God has a standard um, to kind of talk about what that standard should look like and what it was, you know, what God created us sexual beings for. What's the purpose of it? Um, and so we talked about as symbols that are constantly communicating, whether or not we want to be, whether or not we try to be, you are a communicative being. That's just what it means to be a symbol. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in, in sort of thinking through that with sexual expression, um, some of the ways in which we image God through our sexuality, um, Ruth mentioned celebration. That was one of the C words. Um, communication is another one. Um, and again, that goes back to being a symbol. Um, uh, covenant is another one as mm -hmm. well. And that is specific to the marriage relationship. Um, obviously, you can connect with somebody, um, you know, in a, in a communal way. Um, church family or, you know, small group or whatever um, about sexual things, but sex itself should be reserved for the marriage relationship. Genital intercourse should be reserved for that. And that's sort of a covenant um, relationship there with husband and wife. Um, so that's another, another way that it images God. Um, caretaking is another way um, that sex images God and um, is a picture to the world of what God is like. Um, in the garden, you can see that Adam and Eve were to care for one another, and um, they had these corresponding strengths where really needing one another was not a sign of weakness. It was a sign of harmony, that the mm. music of creation mm. was enhanced by this coming together of these two separate beings. Mm. Um, and yeah, consumption stands over and against those things um, because it turns off the symbolicness of the other. Um, and side note, um, you can actually have, um, like with self-pleasuring or um, other uh, sexual encounters that are not imaging God, um, you can also do this to yourself. Mm -hmm. You can turn off your own symbolicness, or you can try to. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's more a sense of tarnishing it than turning it off. But um, when we are more concerned with our pleasure um, than anything else, when we turn sex into um, just an appetite, really, um, what we do is we objectify other people or we objectify ourselves, yeah. and we stop... Um, affirming the communicative nature of what it means to be a human being. And then the other person becomes only about meeting my needs or pleasuring myself. Um, or myself, you know, becomes only about meeting my needs and pleasuring myself. And to turn sex into this appetite, um, to turn sexual encounter, <clears throat> excuse me, into a consumptive activity mm. is to um, lie to ourselves and to lie to others about what it means to be a human being. Yeah. That it actually is a step away from um, the, the picture of what humanity is supposed to be. Um, it undoes a little bit of creation. And um, it's just so powerful. Because I think sometimes we think, uh, especially... Um, you know, self-pleasuring or things that happen kind of like behind closed doors, we think of it as, oh, this is just for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really hurting anybody. <laughs> um, but really, because we are symbols, because that's what God has made our bodies to be, they bear an image. Whether or not we <laughs> agree with that, they do. Um, because of that, really, there's nothing that we do that doesn't communicate Mm -hmm. And again, back to Amy Cuddy's research, um, we create uh, paths for ourselves. And if we, you know, engage in um, sexual activity um, or ways of thinking um, that are over and against this more celebratory, covenant, communicative, caretaking picture of sex as God intended it, um, then we are setting ourselves up to, um, to fail yeah. And to fail repeatedly because mm. we take cues from ourselves just like others take cues from us. 
So a really good question to ask then, if you're trying to determine is something moral, you know, um, if you're talking about, you know, a particular particular relationship that you're in, or, um, you know, if you're struggling with what it means to, um, you know, be faithful, a faithful steward of your sexuality, if you're single or married, one of the, the really important questions to ask is, does this activity, does this line of thinking terrain me toward vulnerability or away from it? Um, because everything we do trains ourselves and others. Mm. And this is part of the cosmic beauty of, of living in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. yeah. that there is nothing secret, right? that everything we do matters. Mm, for sure. So for you guys that have been kind of following us and walking through this with us, I love that. I mean, I love that right there, that there's nothing that we can keep secret, that God knows every part of who we are. And that if you find yourself, you know, trending towards those patterns that are really destructive to distorting your image bearing, um, that God loves us so much, even in that, that he provides that freedom and that grace and that forgiveness mm -hmm. all we have to do is enter into that vulnerability with him and ask for it mm -hmm. that's all we have to do we don't have to you know I don't know I mean I was gonna say we don't have to do I mean we obviously want to change our behavior so it's not in our acts so it's not destroying who we are but I mean we just have to ask and invite God into our our issues and, and to our hurt and into our pain and we can find that freedom and that beginning of God making right what mm -hmm. what has gone so wrong in who we are which I think is just powerful mm -hmm. I mean that's powerful for me who messes up on a moment by moment basis some days <laughs> it's, it's some days are rough you know, it's just hard. It's hard to mm -hmm. be bombarded with all these messages from society that you're not enough or you're too much or, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's so freeing to know that even when I'm believing the lies or I'm in a place of struggle that I'm still loved, I still have worth. You are still loved. You still have worth mm -hmm. um, in those moments of mm -hmm. weakness and struggle. Yeah, God loves us where we are, as we are. We don't have to change to enter into God's grace and forgiveness and love. Mm -hmm. He will take us anytime, yeah. anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's so, so important. I'm mm -hmm. so glad the conversation has gotten there because, you know, to put this sort of weight on how we behave and what mm -hmm. we do, um, I think is important, but you don't want it to put so much weight on it that people, you know, take that message and it and it turns them inward toward more shame. Mm -hmm. That because what you do is important, sort of this um, changing of your mind, which is what repentance means, of saying, I can't do this on my own. I need God. I need others. Um, I need Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit. You know, to have that moment of, oh my gosh, I'm in over my head. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's that's where... Um, everything good begins mm -hmm. that you don't have to you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps and just try harder to be moral um, it doesn't work like that mm -hmm. um, but that what happens when the vulnerability is pursued and when the Holy Spirit um, is active and working is it will have um, it will bear fruit in your bodily life and that's incredibly hopeful because it's not just a spiritual journey that we're on. It is a life journey. Yes. Um, and it's so beautiful to think that, you know, you are not stuck where you are right now. That is the power of redemption. Right. Are you seeing fruit at North Harbor from this series? Absolutely. Um, Dan and I have talked about that a couple times, actually. Just how, you know, different series have um, different impacts. And I think this one has a much more widespread impact than I could have anticipated um, and I can't speak for Dan, but for me anyway, I've just kind of been surprised at how many people have, you know, come and said, wow, we, my, my spouse and I are having real intentional conversations um, that are leading us toward greater intimacy or, you know, we're having more sex and that's helping our married life <laughs> or, you know, single people thinking through, um, okay, what does it mean for me to steward my sexuality in a way that is God honoring, but isn't like shutting it down right. because it's there, whether or not we're acting on it. Um, so yeah, it's been great. 
That's awesome. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for spending some time with thank us you. and answering questions. <laughs> We're so lucky to have you. <laughs> <in our lives. laughs> so for you guys, again, if you have any questions or comments mm-hmm. um, or thoughts, we would love to hear from you. Um, and if you want to do that privately, you can private message yeah. us on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. We can pass messages along to Lisa yeah. Yeah. if you'd like to hear more from her yeah. expertise. Oh. We also <laughs> just got our own Gmail. So mm-hmm. if you aren't on Facebook and somehow found us on YouTube or whatever, um, uh, it's really a long email, but a simple email, if that makes any sense, um, because it's our, our name, the beautiful kingdom warriors at gmail.com. So if you want to email us, if you don't have Facebook or would rather do that, mm-hmm. um, we would be more than happy to, um, you know, answer any questions that you guys have. So and listen to the sermon series yeah. at northharbor.net. North Harbor all the sermons on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have a great week, everybody. Go live in image bearing your yes. sexuality in an awesome way and, and also who you are. Um, just go for it. Don't let shame silence you. Have a great week, everybody. We love you. Bye.